So hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. This is Mel's Gaming here with another Way of the Hunter video. Now this video was recorded during early access as Nine Rocks Games and THQ Nordic were kind enough to allow me to take part in the early access for Way of the Hunter so once again a huge thank you for that. Now in this video we're going to be taking a look at parts of the maps that require permission to hunt on. Now as you'll see as I'm parked here in the jeep it says that in the very top uh, sort of middle of the screen underneath the compass it says permission to hunt required and on this land I cannot hunt without having permission from the landowner. Now there are a couple of ways you can get permission. One is if you visit the various uh, I would call them outposts or cabins on the map. If you visit those there will be missions inside. So you'll see there was a note on the table and you can see we have a mission here from the landowner. Now you can do these missions from the landowners in order to gain their approval. Effectively think of it as doing favours for them so that they like you and then they'll let you hunt on their land. Or you can go to the shop and if you scroll all the way across to boundaries you can buy passes for each of the sections that require uh, permission to actually hunt on. So there's four of these for each map as you will see. All of them cost 4,500 credits each. So yeah there's four per map at those prices. Now it depends on what sort of player you are, whether you would prefer to do the missions or whether you'd prefer to just purchase these. Honestly, it's completely optional and I think you can still do the missions even if you do purchase the passes. So it's not like it locks you out from doing them. And you can see I've bought a couple there. Um, it doesn't seem like these run out or anything. It just seems like once you've purchased them, it's a one-time purchase and then you have access to hunt on that land. Now, we are going to complete the mission that we just picked up in that one outpost at the very beginning as the guy wanted a fallow deer shot through the lungs and only the lungs for some kind of research. So we have just taken out a fallow buck there and I was pretty confident that should be a nice double lung shot. He went down nice and quickly and sure enough, picking him up, it is a nice clean double lung shot. Little bit high but only going through the lungs so that's perfect for the mission. Now something that's really cool is that I didn't actually have the mission activated when I shot this buck. However you'll see that once I go to sell it it actually sort of automatically uses this to complete that mission and I've had it in different cases where you know I haven't had a mission activated where it will actually give me the option before I sell or tax an animal to actually use it to complete a mission and it will come up with a little pop-up box which I think is really handy if you've just forgotten to activate a certain mission. So there you will have seen I just placed the samples at the correct time in the box outside of that cabin. Um, I call them outposts but it does actually say cabin and yeah that completed the mission and that was nice and simple. You will then get another mission from that landowner and you just have to keep doing them until you get approval basically. Now, not all missions are going to be like that. Some actually require you to go and harvest specific mission animals, which I know is something a lot of people find really, really exciting. And you can see we have the mission details here to go and harvest a black bighorn sheep. This was a really interesting one. And when I picked this, this mission up on Nez Perce Valley, I was very, very excited to see this because I was assuming, well, black bighorn sheep, it's probably a melanistic. And we do know that there should be rares in the game based off of what the devs have said. Now obviously this is a an animal that is spawning specifically for a mission, but still to see how the devs have interpreted doing different rares I thought would be something pretty cool. And I decided that I'd go and do this one just to show you guys a little bit of difference between some of the missions. Some of them are a lot more arbitrary than others and some are a little bit more fun allowing you to go and harvest specific animals like this. So as you can see we have a little objective marker and a little objective location over here. Now I figured it was probably going to spawn at the lake that was within this circle. Just seemed like, you know, video game logic, that's probably where it would be. And sure enough there was a herd of bighorn feeding here and there was one notably dark looking individual. Now I wasn't sure to start off with if this was the specific mission animal, there was nothing to, to really say that it definitely was. 
I was just going off the fact that it did definitely look darker than the others but then again it was stood in the shadows so I was like is this definitely the right one I wanted to be quite sure so I was just observing it to see but it was a ram he looked darker than the rest and eventually I do decide that we're going to take him and hopefully that would be the right one and it was only a one star which and an adult which considering the story that went with it about a really aggressive ram that had been killing other rams i was figuring it'd be you know maybe a four star mature or something so i thought that was quite interesting and speaking of four star matures there was actually one in this group which i will actually take down in a different video but we're gonna take down this one here and yeah even though he's in the shadows comparing him to the normal looking bighorn here he looks quite a bit darker now not completely black it still has the white rump but definitely like i said noticeably quite a lot darker so as soon as i'm comfortable i take him there and i was pretty sure that was going to be a good shot and off they all run now i went and picked up the blood it was a very very easy trail to follow because it had been a nice vital hit and we're gonna just go and pick him up now and after he died i did get the little pop-up in the top left saying to harvest the black bighorn sheep so i knew that this definitely was the specific mission animal now taking a look at him on the ground he does actually only have one horn which makes him just a little bit more unique as well and i think that that's really cool and something i'd love to see with the free roam hunting animals i'd love to see ones with only one horn or one antler i think that would be pretty cool but a very very dark sheep like i said not completely black there's still some lighter tones in there on the the end of the nose and on the rump but yeah a nice double lung and actually an artery shot to bring this guy down nice and quickly and it does actually even look darker in the harvest screen which i thought was pretty cool to actually see so really really happy with that hunt and it was just a nice simple objective to go and complete i'm not going to end up taxing this guy because at the end of the day it is a mission animal and you know i don't normally tax mission animals in different games i like to only tax stuff that has been uh, that i found sort of naturally if that makes sense now interestingly in the harvest screen this guy does have two horns so i think that would be something that needs a little bit of fixing but you guys saw on the ground he only had one horn which i think added to the story of it but yeah, it's still a pretty cool thing to actually do as part of a mission to make a landowner happy. I think that's a really nice touch. Like I said, a lot of people like mission animals and there is the option to tax it there. So you probably could end up putting that in your trophy lodge, which again, a lot of people like that kind of stuff. Like, you know, based off of other hunting games, there's a lot of people that like to do the missions and get all the mission animals as kind of like a collectible. So nice that that option is actually there. Now, just to finish off this video, I wanted to show you guys what happens if you shoot an animal in private land that you do not have access to. So currently, I did not have access to this specific part of the map on, uh, on Transylvania. I didn't have permission from the landowner at all. And I decided I was going to take a red stag and just see what would happen if I had to pay a fine or what. Now, as you'll see, after actually finding the stag and walking up to it, you can't actually harvest it and you'll get a prompt that says seized by private area owner. So you can't pick up animals that you have shot in areas you don't have permission for. So if you see a five star trophy or a rare, do not shoot it if you don't have permission to be in that area because you won't be able to harvest it. You will have to just go and either grind the missions as quickly as you can or grind credits to try and purchase your way onto the land as quickly as possible. But that is going to be it for this video guys. That's basically all you need to know. You will come across these different areas on the map. Like I said, there's going to be four regions on each map that require the the private access passes or for you to get the approval of the landowner to hunt on those areas and a good way of knowing where they are roughly is if you head towards any of the uh, the cabins or as i would been calling them the outposts any of those green little cabins that are marked on the map they're going to be on private land because those are owned by the private landowners those buildings so if you head towards any of them you're going to end up on private land and of course as i've shown in the video you will get the the pop-up under underneath your compass telling you that you are on private land so make sure like i said don't shoot any trophies on land you don't have permission to be on otherwise you're going to end up losing them
So I hope that this has been useful and informative. It's taken me a little while to work out the whole public land versus private land thing and actually to work out who owns which pieces of land and stuff. It, it takes a while as you unlock the map you'll very quickly learn who owns which pieces of land and of course based off the missions you'll learn who owns which pieces of land based off the names of the of the owners and for some of them like on uh, Transylvania you can just about make out the names of the landowners on the passes in the store which is how I've actually gone about purchasing them i very carefully looked at who owns which cabins and then looked at the names that were on the on the permission uh certificates and then purchased them based off of that but yeah that's basically it and if you guys have any other questions please make sure to leave them down in the comments and i will do my best to answer them as always thank you guys so so much for watching and yeah i hope this was useful and enjoyable thank you so so much for all your support as always and i will see you guys in the next video thank you